automatic crafting machines, creative mode soft locking, mob vote hacking, and much, much more. Hello there, Ray here. Let's take a look at all of the new Minecraft news, starting off with the newest 1.21 snapshot. And it's out for Java as well as the Bedrock Betas. If you haven't seen all the hidden details about what's coming with 1.21, you can check out this video of mine after this one. So to get the new 1.21 features, you'll have to start a new world, go into experiments, down here and then you can turn on stuff like the 1.21 update or you can even turn on the villager rebalancing which is still in testing phase then just go ahead done and load up your world the crafter which is a new block in 1.21 has been added in the snapshot and looks amazing this was announced during the minecraft live event and when you open up they have this 3x3 crafting grid the way it works is a little bit like a normal crafter where items can be put into these slots and you can craft items over here. The only thing is you can actually pull these out of this slot. You have to use redstone with this and that's what makes this a automatic crafting. So for every pulse that it gets, it will do one crafting step and it will also shoot those torches off the same side where there's this little face and mouth here. If we go ahead and pick them up because we got four torches, you can notice the mouth actually little opens up and it shoots it out. It's very cute. And these little sidebars kind of look like ears too. So it's also great for people who want to build and use it as a face. But we can actually stick any type of container right in front of where it's shooting the items out. So now when we power this, you can see it activates, it turns all red, but then the torches don't get shot off onto the ground, but into the container. Now we can automate this further by going ahead and actually pushing items into this GUI in here. This can either be done with hoppers or droppers can also push items into it. So let's go ahead and do that instead. We'll just have the coal be put in from this hopper up here. You can notice that the hopper automatically starts pushing it in. And let's say we'll push some sticks in from the dropper side. So if we look inside the crafter, we can see exactly what's going on here. What the crafter does is that it tries to fill in the items from the top left and work its way to the right and all the way down and then row by row down to the lower right. And it does this for every empty slot. And then once there is, then once it puts one item in at least each of the slots, then once it puts an item in a slot, it will then look for the next area which uses the same type of item, which has a lower amount. So notice like this one will turn to 20 and then you'll see that these other ones aren't 20. So it'll go ahead and put those up to 20. And once they're all 20, then it'll go back up to the top left again. Now the player can interact with this too. So we can go in here and we can pull out like everything in this slot. You can see now he's trying to fill up this one because this one's the lowest amount. And once it gets back up to 25, then it'll start trying to even it out among all the rest of them. But if we want to make torches, this is not going to work very well because we're just making some blocks of coal, which is really cool for converting like all your gold nuggets into gold ingots and gold blocks automatically. But let's try to make ourselves the torches that we want. So to do this, we can actually disable slots. So if we just click while hovering over these different 3x3 three three grid we can turn them from gray to white white's just like the normal color of the background of this GUI meaning that it's actually a disabled slot so the game just kind of ignores it so let's go ahead and just disable all of these so we only have two slots to work with because we still want to make torches with coal and sticks so now when we put coal in it's just going to fill up these two slots and it will ignore all the rest of them so this is sort of what we want but we want sticks in this other slot over here so what we'll actually do is we could come in and put in items manually so we can put sticks in here and that way the coal will never end up in this slot where the sticks are so we can use this top hopper here to only push in coal and let's say we can use this drop over here to push in sticks so let's go ahead and power that and now we got some more sticks in there but if i make the system more automated we can actually come in with two different types of hoppers one hopper just dedicated to putting in sticks but the other one just being for coal that way both of them will constantly fill up their slots and as long as we don't make too many torches so that we lose all of our sticks and coal these hoppers should always keep their items in the correct two slots but we can automate this further by using a comparator so let's go ahead and read what's going on inside of here the way comparators work with the crafters is a little bit different than other things that's because it does actually work like if this was a dropper and it had just two stacks in it instead each non-empty slot as well as toggled slot will add one redstone power onto the signal here so if you look right here we can see on the right hand side it says there's a power of nine come from at this redstone dust here that means all nine slots are being occupied so they considered these disabled slots as being each occupied by a disabled toggle and it considers each of these it doesn't matter if there's one item in there or a whole stack they each consider just one redstone strength so if you set up with only one each it's still producing redstone strength of nine 
which means that this comparator isn't very helpful in letting us know if there's greater than one item in each of these stacks. The reason why we want more than one item in each of these is so that we can actually come in and power this and produce the item that we want without worry about us losing the original recipe. Because let's say we just hook this up to a clock and we power it a whole bunch of times. All of a sudden, it turns out that we lost all of our items and then the hoppers just pushed in their items and they got put in based off of priority which turns out not to be the right order we want as we want the coal on top and the sticks on bottom. We want to make sure there's at least one coal and one stick before we actually come in and power it. So if we want the crafter to automatically power itself when it knows that there's enough items inside this, there's one sure way that we can do this and that is not actually reading this part with the comparator but reading our hoppers here. So if we have a comparator here reading this hopper at the top and a comparator down here reading this one. This one being our cold one and this one being our sticks. As long as both of these are on, we know we have some extra coal as well as extra sticks that are constantly trying to get pushed into this crafter here. So therefore we could go ahead and power the crafter. So I made a simple automatic crafting setup. So I went ahead and just rotated the crafter. So it's now pointing in this direction. It's going to push its items into this barrel. The crafter can be placed any direction. So it could be facing downwards. It could also be facing directly upwards. So you can have it like shoot items directly into a water stream. We have the coal getting pushed in from this side and the sticks over here. They're both being read with comparators. Both their signals are going into these two blocks and both of them are being converted from always being on to being off, we do this using a torch. So if either of these hoppers go empty, these torches will turn on. Now we have a different system over here, which is just a clock that's going in circles, sending a pulse off every so often. So this pulse is going over here and going into the crafter. And every time it gets a pulse, you can see the top of the crafter lights up as well as this little arrow. And then it pushes items over here into this barrel. But the system is also smart and will turn off as soon as it knows that it runs out of items. Let's go ahead and just remove some of the coal. I'll leave the sticks alone. So you can see that even if one side goes empty, it will actually turn the whole system off. So we're almost out of items. We've got four left. And as soon as it runs out of items, this torch turns on, which then pushes power over here into this clock, which stops this clock from actually continuing. So if either side runs out of the appropriate items needed to craft, the whole system will stop. That way you don't accidentally lose your original crafting recipe. How excited are you guys for the crafter? Now if you have this hooked up to your coal farm and this one hooked up to your stick farm, then whenever this one receives some more coal from the farm, it'll automatically know that there is extra items in this here and they'll go ahead and start crafting once again. This is amazing guys, I'm so excited to work with this to add automatic crafting to all my different types of farms as I have an entire YouTube series where I'm trying to design an automatic farm for every single item in the game of Minecraft. And if you look up here, there's over 1,300 different items and I currently design farms for 1,237 of them, putting me at 95% to completing this goal. But in my document here, I have a whole column which tells you if an item needs to be crafted in order to get it from farmable materials. It turns out the majority of items actually have to be crafted. And in the past, I just considered these as being complete by making farms that got their raw materials, like for a quartz farm, I have my bartering farm that would get you the quartz, and then you'd have to craft it in order to get like these quartz stairs. But now this can all be done using the automatic crafter. And by hooking these up to automatic farms, almost every single item can be infinitely automatic, which is this column here, which just means that once you set it up, it doesn't need any new input from the player. Every item that needs to be crafted couldn't qualify for being infinitely automatic. This means we can revisit all these items, make automatic crafters for them, and actually get them checked marked off of this document. If you want to see this whole document, it is open to the public, and I'm constantly updating it. You can see all the people that are currently on it, and you can find the link to it in the description. Now there's another way you can actually use a crafter, and that is use one crafter to do multiple items. So let's say instead of wanting to make normal torches, we want to make ourselves some redstone torches, but we also want to make normal torches sometimes. And this is where another feature comes in. You can actually place a hopper underneath of the crafter, and this can pull items out of it. It has the same priority where I pull items from the top slot before pulling from the bottom slot. And this is where the comparator actually comes in. So we can actually read when we clear out the first slot because once the first slot is gone, that means it no longer will produce the nine redstone strength, but instead it'll produce eight, which will then turn off this torch, which then we can use this torch to lock this hopper to stop pulling items out of it. So if we go ahead and watch it, once it runs out of items, I went ahead and locked this hopper. It didn't pull out any of the sticks. So now this hopper is free so that we can put in our redstone dust. So if we had a different hopper that's putting in the redstone dust, then it can go into it 
and we can make a different type of torch. Now, if we want to automate this entire system, it comes quite a bit more complicated because then you have to make sure you also have to power this once all the coal does come out, but you don't want to start pulling out the redstone once it comes in. But this type of switching out the actual recipes is way more complicated than just setting up a dedicated crafter for each of the items that you want to craft. Now the cost to actually make a crafter isn't that expensive, especially if you're at the end game where you're making automatic crafters. You need at least five iron ingots, which you can get from my easy iron farm. You also need a crafting table itself, two redstone, and a dropper. So we're saying a workstation that takes other workstations. We did have the blast furnace recipe, which did take a furnace in order to make the blast furnace. So it does feel kind of modded. We put different ones in to produce a stronger one, but it is very logical that this would be the way to craft it. So overall, not too expensive, especially in end game when you start wanting to do stuff like this. But you can take this crafting thing a whole step further, where after you crafted an item, you can shove the item not into just any old chest, but you can shove it into another crafter. So we went ahead and we pushed our torches into this crafter which uses the torches plus the carved pumpkins to carve some jack-o'-lanterns. It's automatically pushing torches in and using up the carved pumpkins making jack-o'-lanterns, which is really cool. Though you can see we have a problem where we're also getting torches. So what's happening is this is filling up with torches and all the extra torches are getting pushed out because the stack is already full. Nice thing about these crafters, if you have a really rare ingredient, let's say you don't have a lot of carved pumpkins, you can always put those in manually and then let the crafter just do like the torch part. So in a case like this where the items from this crafter are going into this barrel, the torches are actually just getting shoved over here and they're getting squished inside this container here and then they're just popping out. So in this case it would be better to have a chest in between the two of these so that they can overflow and then only some of them go inside the crafter. But the concept is so cool where you can link crafters up together again to craft any craftable recipe in the entire game. And that's why this is so big to the redstone community. Now I've seen every single redstone component being added into the game since I started before there was even a survival mode in the game and by far the biggest addition to the game was the hopper before you had to actually pick up every single item that came from your farm with your actual player there's no way to automatically collect it and although I still think the hopper is the number one biggest change when it comes to redstone I think the crafter is now number two. Where do you think the crafter ranks among all the redstone components? I'll be designing a lot more automatic crafting systems like these during my live stream today where you guys, the viewer, can actually join this server here and play with all the newest features along with me. And it's going to be a lot of fun, so check that out with the link down below. You can always find the IP to the server on my Discord as well. Now they'll possibly make changes to the crafter in the future, so they are looking for feedback. Is there something that you would change about it? I know that I would probably change the comparator thing because it would be nice to know if the items are getting low in their individual stacks. Although I know this would be very difficult to do because the comparator can only show 15 different redstone signals. And there could potentially be all nine of these slots opened up with each of them having different amounts of items inside them. So if there's like just a single torch here, how do you know that that stack's getting low when all the other stacks might be completely full? If you guys have an answer to this problem, let me know. But currently it seems like the comparator can't be used in too many places because by the time the items are gone, it's too late. And even if the items are gone, you can't automatically detect which item is missing and know which hopper that you need to let more items into. Because some hopper that's just on the side that happens to have some other item in it is just going to replace its slot. Make sure you're subscribed with the bell turned on so you don't miss out on all the crazy stuff I do with this. Now when it comes to this little yellow splash message here in the top right, you can actually turn this off now. Go into accessibility settings and scroll down where it says hide splash text. So if you turn on the hide, now we go to the menu, there's no splash text here. Although it's a little bit confusing as it says hide splash text, and there's on and off. Usually when you think off, you think about you turning the splash text off. They should just rewrite this as saying splash text default on and then just turn it off. But they have this for other things too, it's just kind of confusing. But they also added in a recovery screen. So if you accidentally have a world that's missing data, or if the world happened to shut down where it, something just failed unexpectedly, there'll be a pop-up screen that'll try to let you recover it. Despite these pots called decorative pots, their subtitles were calling them pots. So those got updated as well as decorative pots were added to the redstone tab. Just because it's a container that can be read with a comparator, just like all the other containers. You also normally can't break stuff when you're in adventure mode, but you could use projectiles in adventure mode and actually break pots. So they removed this in the latest snapshot. But when it came to some projectiles, even when you were doing this in creative or survival, such as like shooting a rocket off, and hitting one of these pots, they wouldn't actually break. So now they will actually break. Horse fruit are also supposed to break off when shot with projectiles, but they weren't doing this with rockets either, which was added in the snapshot. If you have cheats on and you write a command, but you do something incorrectly, it's supposed to tell you what you did wrong. 
but for some reason the last snapshot made this not work in some cases. Now we have it back again. There's this game rule when it comes to how long your command chain length can be. Well, the problem is if you would set this to zero, this means you can't have anything longer than zero characters. So if I would just try to put down any command, like send myself back into survival mode, notice it doesn't actually work. Essentially, you just soft locked your game, so no commands work whatsoever. And you can't even undo your mistake because if you tried to set the limit back up again, it's also a command and it doesn't accept it because it's longer than zero characters. Of course, this was intended, so it was fixed. This same command wasn't working properly with the functions, which has been resolved. This next one's annoying one for anyone who has a lot of worlds. I always have around 200 worlds where I'm working on different projects. But essentially, if you would scroll down and then you would search for something, let's search for the word craft. It appears that nothing popped up. The thing is, it's actually above us. So if I would scroll upwards, all of a sudden it appears. This fooled me several times thinking that I just didn't have that world. But now they removed this weird bug, so we don't have to worry about that. They also fixed several different bugs related to grammar, misplaced pixels, buttons just not working correctly, and a few other minor things. Sometimes when the player disconnected, it wouldn't actually show the proper disconnection screen, but instead would show this. In other changes, data packs got updated to version 21, which included all of these changes here, and research packs got updated to version 19. Different values sent through chat are now simplified with sterilization to make chat components more straightforward. Now the Minecraft mob vote was pretty disturbing. There was a lot of people that obviously wanted the penguin and the crab, yet the armadillo won. But there was actually an exploit when it came to mob voting, which allowed votes for infinite size, which may have been used to actually make infinite amount of votes. This is really scary and might have meant that all those votes that we did meant nothing. And someone just came in and put in a whole bunch of fake votes, skewing the results so armadillo would win. Now Minecraft PR has responded to these attempts of hacking and rigging the mob vote. They say, I quote, the team is aware that there are attempts to taint the results of the mob vote. Rest assured that these attempts did not impact the results. We are confident that this year's winner accurately reflects the results of the vote. So it's possible based on what type of packets were actually sent, they could separate the legitimate ones from the fake ones. Now they didn't say how many total votes there was, because the armadillo did win by over 10%, which may seem like it's pretty close, but it's actually pretty far when you consider that there's millions and millions of votes. So it would have taken a lot for a crab to win over armadillo. But actually your vote meant nothing and it had nothing to do with hacking. It also had nothing to do with that there's over 300 million copies sold now. Because that doesn't count the over 600 million players who are playing Minecraft The China Edition, which is a completely free to download and play game. But unlike previous years, China can now vote in the same mob vote as paying players. And there's concerns that the China accounts can easily be made so one player could vote multiple times. And which mob did these players vote for? Well, they're younger so they voted more for the penguin and the armadillo because they really like the dog armor. And because they make up the vast majority of all Minecraft players, your vote from a paid account had no chance against all these free accounts. Now in the past, China's edition was separate not included in the main versions of mob vote. So this is the first year we're actually seeing this. Let me know if you think this is fair. Now say hello to me over at my Twitch live stream as I design new automatic systems for the crafter. Otherwise see how I made an automatic farm for every single item in the game with this playlist here. And I really appreciate all my supporters who get extra perks like having creative mode right away. Otherwise you can always leave a like on the video. I'll see you over there. Bye bye.